Hey, what's happening gamers? It's Kwing here, and for years, Nintendo has been trying to get GoldenEye on the Wii's Virtual Console, and due to legal reasons, the only way for that to be achieved was an all-new game. Once again, developer Irocom does the Bond franchise justice. I'm happy to report that GoldenEye for Wii is an amazing game, but nothing like the original GoldenEye, so let's just clear the air. That's not to say that this game doesn't offer some nostalgia from the original, especially some parts of the game like the opening and ending of the dam, for example. The story begins with both agents infiltrating a Russian base that is suspected to support terrorism. 006 is captured by the general and executed before his friend's eyes. James detonates the explosives and leaves by plane just like in the original film. Although unlike the film, it doesn't begin in 1986 and move forward nine years later. It all takes place around the same time. Players have four controller options in this game. Gameplay from the old N64 game wouldn't really hold up to today's standard of shooters that release literally every month. So this new GoldenEye borrows a lot of elements from modern first-person shooters, like using cover during heavy firefights, destructible environments, regenerative health, and of course online matches. Gamers have two ways to play this game, incorporating stealth to complete your objectives or going in guns a-blazing. The gadget in this game are just limited to James' smartphone though. You can use it to take pictures, hack stuff, open doors, and even use it as a tracking device. And that's about it, minus the night vision goggles you get later. Sorry folks, no watch laser this time around. I actually do have some issues with this game though. For starters, Bond can only carry three weapons at a time. While realistic, it does not capture its predecessor's charm. 007 also doesn't have secondary weapons, unless the mission profile says otherwise. So no throwing knives or grenades, proximity mines, etc. at the enemies, which is a major bummer. Multiplayer has a few hiccups I've noticed as well. Players start out with two weapons and limited secondary ones too, so when you're out of ammo, you're out of ammo. Which is so not cool, because picking up different weapons was part of the frantic fun of the original. Also, I'm not a fan of the preset weapons and lack of customization that this game offers for multiplayer. Getting back to the single player, sometimes the AI can be pretty stupid. Take this scene for example. I just offed his buddy and the guard didn't even notice a thing. What's funny about this is sometimes the game goes in reverse where guards can hear a pin drop that's nowhere nearby. Like knocking this lock off the case is going to alert all the enemies and set off the alarms in the base. That wouldn't happen. When playing GoldenEye on higher difficulties, the only way to advance to the next level is to complete all the objectives. When you fail, you have to replay the entire level. The blurry reloading screen really annoyed me. I'm also sick and tired of these many quick time events in video games, especially in this game, from opening the doors or just fighting the bosses. Seriously, enough is enough. My final complaint with this game is Bond himself. It's nothing against Daniel Craig as a person or as an actor, but I can't stand the guy as Bond. He's like more wicked than Dalton's Bond. I mean, he's just a murderous, bad Bond. Pierce was more like the character in Fleming's novels, except with a 90s modern twist. Out of all the great voice actors in this game, like Judi Dench and some others, Bond just seems emotionless and didn't really make me enjoy the cutscenes where Bond was monologuing. Moving on to the stuff that I actually liked about this game. Graphics, while not groundbreaking or the best on the Wii, do a great job of capturing Mr. Craig's interpretation of James Bond. The world is very realistic, but a bit too dark and gritty for my taste. Bond travels to many unique locations, like the nightclub, and even the level design tributes Rare's game to some degree, which I liked. I laughed a lot during the bathroom guy's return, and I felt bad for him too. I enjoyed breaking out of the Russian jail and driving a tank, although I couldn't run people over so I was a bit saddened by that. While these environments give you that feeling of deja vu, this really is an all new Bond game and needs to be treated as such. The music for this game was just incredible though. The composer for Tomorrow Never Dies does the game score and it sounds just like one of his Bond scores. It was epic! The story wasn't lacking either and even though it's a reimagining of the 95 film, I liked it more than Daniel Craig's other Bond movies. 
except for turning Alec into a bank thief and having his reasons for betraying MI6 because of banks and conspiracy just didn't really work. Other than that, they kept to the source material very nicely and modeled it after one of my favorite Bond films of all time. In the olden days, people played the N64 for multiplayer sessions, and it was the must-have party machine. For GoldenEye Wii, the multiplayer split-screen is almost as fun as the N64 game, where two, three, or four of your friends can fight it out to the death. Classic modifiers like Golden Gun, Paintball, You Only Live Twice, and many other return to add to the insanity and the joy. Over the weekend, my friends and family got pulled into this game, and hours just literally slipped on by. I'm a little bummed that the maps are all new, though, but I will admit that the old-school nostalgia came flooding back to me and my friends as we remembered playing the original GoldenEye with its Wii incarnation. All your favorite characters are back, and even more characters are added for multiplayer this time around. 006 was my favorite, along with Odd Job, for various reasons. Let me know in the comments section below who is your favorite character to play as in GoldenEye, either the N64 or Wii version. Playing multiplayer was an absolute blast, but it got even better when we figured out how to use the proximity mines. I feel other critics have been a bit too harsh on the offline multiplayer because of how uncommon it is to play this without going online. Speaking of online play, it wasn't that bad. Frankly, I didn't play it that much, but if you're into Call of Duty and you like those online shooters, this game is actually perfect fit for you and online works really well. I really didn't come across any lagging or issues like that whatsoever, and Wi-Fi works great. Gameplay is very well done in this game. You'll be shooting the bad guys and performing takedown attacks in no time at all. I haven't noticed any problems while aiming or turning around like I did with Conduit using the Wii Mote, but uh, honestly, this is a game that you're probably going to want to use the Classic Controller Pro or bust out the old GameCube controller. I may get flamed for this, but I think the inclusion of regenerative health was actually a good idea. Finding body armor was always a pain for me in the original. But don't worry, if you guys want to play the classic Bond mode, then you'll have to find armor to heal yourself. Then you'll get to know the dread that we experience. When Got Game Zone, Nick Huggett reported at E3 2010, this is not the same GoldenEye you played after school with your friends, he was right to some degree. This time around, multiplayer isn't what puts GoldenEye on top. It's the single player. Shocking, I know, but it's so true. Like the original before it, objectives play a vital role in this game's solo campaign. Going through the game a second time offers Bond different areas to revisit along with new objectives, like shooting down enemy helicopters, saving hostages, photographing secret documents, and a lot more. Playing these other modes will require you to act more stealthy and less like Rambo, though. Stealth gameplay relies on using silenced weapons, knocking out the bad guys, shooting out cameras, and traveling through the vents to get to your next destination. Going after the bad guys out in the open while fun doesn't always work well. Besides, it's one thing to fight the AI on the easier difficulty, but trust me, they aren't pushovers later. The game's AI is pretty challenging and intelligent. They'll use cover, they'll throw grenades at you, they'll come after you, and it's not fun. Parts of the higher difficulty can become downright frustrating, which I found awesome. I mean, these days you don't expect current gen games to kick your butt, but GoldenEye does and then some and it really gives players a taste of what gaming was back in the late 90s. Still, the question remains, is this game any good? Yes, it is. This game has a tank full of replay value and great multiplayer madness to boot. Heck, this game even has a cheat option, which I'm excited to see how that turns out, but they haven't released any cheats of yet. GoldenEye Wii, while different than what revolutionized console FPS games back in the day, it does do the Bond license and the GoldenEye name proud. If you're looking for a really good shooter for the Wii, then look no further than GoldenEye for the Wii. Alrighty, that definitely does it for me gamers. Review's over, go home! Next review for God Game will be Sonic Colors for the Wii. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. Please subscribe, and until we meet again gamers, God bless and happy gaming. Kill me? No. <laughs>